Making cocktails can be a little complex sometimes, especially when it comes to when to shake or stir a cocktail. But in this video, I'm gonna explain all of that. So before we get into shaking versus stirring, the first thing that we need to talk about is why you use either technique really. If you've watched the first video in this series on the introduction to cocktails, you'll remember that a cocktail is an alcoholic drink consisting of a spirit or spirits mixed with other ingredients. So when you mix ingredients, you gotta find a way to actually mix them and put them together and infuse the different flavors together. And so that is actually the first basic reason why you even stir or shake a cocktail. These are just two of the most common methods to making cocktails because they give you the most control. But outside of just mixing the ingredients together, it's also important to know that dilution and water is probably one of the most overlooked and underappreciated ingredients to every single cocktail. Too little water and the cocktail comes out too hot in, the, in terms of alcoholic flavor and too much water and you get an over diluted cocktail. Shaking and stirring also plays a huge role into introducing water into each and every cocktail. And these two methods give you kind of the most control into how to do that. All right, I get it. I know what you must be thinking. Great, Louie, thank you so much. You're just explaining that you need to mix cocktails. Woohoo. Seems like common sense, right? Like that was pretty self-explanatory, dude. But hold your horses, I'm getting to the interesting part. So why do you use one technique versus the other? Well. Uh, the most basic way to explain that is it really depends on the ingredients that you are mixing. So probably the best way to start to describe to you why you would shake a cocktail versus why you would stir a cocktail is to understand what happens when you do each of those. When you shake a cocktail, you are not only combining all of the ingredients and chilling down the drink and diluting it, you're also adding and introducing air into the cocktail. So when you have some heavier elements and you're shaking it, it kind of helps bring it all together and brighten it up and give it a nice, almost fluffier uh, kind of feel. Whereas when you are stirring a cocktail, you are looking to just smoothen it out, introduce a good amount of water and chill it down, but doing so in a very, very smooth and non-agitating way. So I like to say that if there's anything that is a almost like a cloudy ingredient or um, something that has a little bit more viscosity or a little bit more of a fat to it, something that isn't easily uh, introduced, it needs to be shaken. Things like lime juice, lemon juice, coconut milk, anything that has a, some sort of fat or, or a, a thicker kind of element, it really needs to be not only shaken to be aerated and mixed in. When you shake, you are aerating and adding air to the cocktail, which helps bring those flavors together. It actually gives you a cohesive cocktail. Stirring those kinds of ingredients doesn't always lend itself to a cocktail that's well balanced. It won't actually feel like it's one thing. It'll feel like separate different ingredients in the same glass. So if you have anything like fruit juice, some sort of milk or cream or anything like that, it really needs to be shaken. So for example, if you were trying to make a classic daiquiri, which is rum, lime juice, and sugar, those are ingredients that definitely need to be shaken. You need to get that rum to mix really well with that lime juice and the sugar, and you really need to aerate it to kind of really bring it up and have it all be mixed into the cocktail. Whereas if you were making a Manhattan or an old fashioned, you really, really need to stir it because at the end of the day, you really want a smooth, almost delicate cocktail that really doesn't need to be agitated. You just want to mix those flavors without agitating the liquid too much. Okay, so now that we've gone over the differences between each technique, why they're important and why you would use each one, I guess the next question becomes is, how do you know you've done it correctly? When it comes to a shaken cocktail, you'll end up having a good frost on the outside of your tin, as well as when you pour out the cocktail, you'll have a nice foamy layer at the top when you have those ingredients. And that's how you know you've properly diluted and aerated that cocktail. So let's make a quick daiquiri just so I can show you guys. And so we, are, we built the cocktail in our smaller shaker tin. We're gonna grab our larger shaker tin, make a nice flat side with it, and really lock that in there so that when we are shaking, there's no chance that this is gonna come apart. And I'm gonna drench myself in daiquiri. And then the other thing that you wanna keep in mind is that these are usually stainless steel. You wanna make sure that you're not transferring uh, excessive heat from your palms into the drink, which is actually gonna it's gonna kind of mess up your dilution. So you really don't wanna have a lot of 
uh, contact with your palms on the cocktail while shaking. So I'm gonna grab them at the two ends and try not to transfer too much heat. And as for shaking technique, it's very, it varies wildly from bartender to bartender. It's really what feels comfortable to you. I used to shake in a specific way and it was actually giving me elbow uh, pain. And so I then just changed up my mechanics until something felt a little bit more right. And so uh, it really depends on you. Find what feels right to you. But the idea is to basically throw the ice back and forth to really mix it in there, break some of that up, dilute it, and aerate the cocktail. You really do gotta introduce air, and for that, you gotta hit it back and forth. You have to shake it back and forth really, really hard. And so you got that nice frosty little tin there. You can see some of the, uh, it's really frosted on the outside. And we're gonna pop that open. Uh, the way you want to do it is you want to find really close to where the two tins connect. You want to find that little space and bang it on the side of your palm here. To, that'll release the tin. And then we're going to grab our Hawthorne strainer, our tea strainer, and we are going to pour that out. As you can see, maybe you can't, there's uh, quite a bit of bubbles in here and it ends up all settling at the top where you can see a good amount of air bubbles have formed. Um, that's usually a good indication that you've aerated it quite well. Uh, and you can see that the entire drink is one consistent color and it's very mixed in. It's very chilled down. It is a perfectly diluted cocktail. You can almost see a, a lighter ring at the top of this cocktail. And so now let's make a stirred cocktail. I'm gonna make a Negroni. Uh, these are three ingredients. They're all alcohol based. They, there is no citrus and there is no, there's nothing that has anything a little bit thicker of viscosity. So really we're just trying to combine the flavors, chill this down and properly dilute it. So we've got all of our ingredients in here. Uh, we are going to fill up our mixing glass with ice almost all the way to the top. We want as much ice making as much contact with this drink, with this cocktail as possible to be able to dilute it. So now that we did that, we are going to add our weighted bar spoon into the side here and we are going to stir until this reaches the proper temperature and proper dilution. Uh, this should take quite a bit. You shouldn't, like I wouldn't be done right here. You should stir for quite a little while. Um, I would say anywhere between probably 15, 20, 30 seconds. Um, and that again is not a hard rule because it really depends on the cocktail. Some cocktails require more dilution, uh, some require less. Um, but the best way to do it is tasting it and evaluating it um, and that way you have to learn the proper dilution yourself, unfortunately. Um, it's one of those trial and error things. But hey, the good news is that means you get to drink some more. And so if you can tell here, um, I'm holding this mixing glass at the very bottom because I do not want to transfer any excess heat from my hand into this cocktail. So all I'm doing is making sure that this mixing glass isn't going anywhere um, by holding the very bottom of it. I would say that's probably about good, but I am gonna test it out. I'm gonna grab a straw and we're gonna give this a little taste. All right, let's uh, see if we've properly diluted this Negroni. Oh yeah, that right there is perfectly diluted. It's got that silky texture on the tongue, it's ice cold, and it is a perfectly well-balanced Negroni. Let's pour this out before it continues to dilute in our mixing glass, and we will keep it chilled over this large cube. Uh, these little details that seem kind of minute when it comes to uh, or, or unimportant when it comes to making cocktails, this really is what makes the difference between a really well-crafted cocktail and just something that someone threw together. 
these things matter. So I hope that this, but that's enough for me. I've got two delicious cocktails I have to get back to drinking and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Mm. Really like using that, that Argentinian gin in this Negroni. It's really good.